Thanks for watching the Shikama Live Show with your host Shikama. I'm going to talk about a couple of serious issues that are floating around the uh, the news. Uh, ISIS and 11 planes disappearing. So now we have a new name for the Al-Qaeda, ISIS. Actually, it's not new. It was called ISIS before, Al-Qaeda. Did you know that? It's the same exact group, the same exact group. Why was it changed from Al-Qaeda to ISIS? Because the U.S. military said that they would not supply Al-Qaeda. They would not support militarily Al-Qaeda. And they would not assist them in any sort of fashion. They are the enemy. So what they did was... They got a new branding ceremony, and they went from Al-Qaeda to ISIS. Now, ISIS, as backed up by the CIA, FBI, is now on the rampage in Iraq. I want to go over a couple of things about that. We bombed Libya and sacked Gaddafi and killed him, murdered him. Gaddafi was against Al-Qaeda and any other terrorist organization. We took him out, and now they run the country. And of course, they're running the country into the ground. The bankers, of course, immediately went in and formulated a national bank for Libya. What happened in Iraq? The same exact thing. Saddam Hussein was against any terrorist organization. Oh no, you, the mainstream media probably told you the exact opposite. That Saddam Hussein was somehow funding terrorism. Nothing could be further from the truth. He killed them on sight in his country. There was a standing order to kill any terrorist organization or terrorist group. We sacked Iraq and killed, murdered him. And the bankers, of course, immediately came in and did two things. Saddam had been trying to sell oil under the euro instead of the dollar. The euro is actually more available to a lot of people. And it, at the time, it was much more productive than the dollar. So they immediately switched that formulated a national bank. Do you see a pattern here? Well, when we left Iraq, supposedly, allegedly, I don't think we actually left. No, we might not have a million troops there, but we didn't leave by anybody, any stretch of the imagination, because there were still complaints about it, even after he had claimed to have left Iraq as promised. We then have this Syria thing spring up. We have to have somewhere else that we're going to do. And we, I already made videos showing you that we were supplying the quote-unquote rebels, and I showed you that the quote-unquote rebels were actually people coming from outside of Syria into the country, murdering the people there, and the people were begging for Assad to come and bring his uh, palace guards and his elite guards to kill these quote-unquote Syrian rebels as funded by Israel, as funded by one of the princes of, uh, in Saudi Arabia, as funded by the CIA, as supplied from Eastern Europe, not Russia, not China, who were sniping people, who were blowing up people, blowing up people. Why would the rebels, allegedly fighting Assad, blow up the common people? Those aren't rebels. By definition, those aren't rebels. That is a takeover. That's an outside force trying to take over the country. That's what that is. But you all are, are in Obama's pocket, and you, and what, it, what really gets me is you keep falling for it. You hate the guy. 
but you keep falling for it. When they say military, you stand up at attention, you salute, and you go, we got to support our troops. The CIA has misled you time and time again. There are no Syrian rebels. Let me repeat that because you're stupid. There are no Syrian rebels. In fact, really, there are no, there is no Al Qaeda. There is no terrorist organization. There is only the CIA of the United States of the, of America. What does that mean? That means that the CIA went over to Afghanistan, formulated a group, asked Osama bin Laden, who was actually a religious guy, who was, you know, a religious uh, uh, Muslim, who had his own personal, because, of, you know, he's the he's in the Saudi family. Do you really think somebody in the Saudi family is attacking us, blowing up? Do you really fall for that? I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. I mean, if you're awakened, if you claim to be awakened, if you're a patriot, if you claim to be a patriot, how would you fall for the third cousin of the Saudi royal or the third grandchild or third, third child of the fifth wife, whatever he is? How would you, why would you fall for him formulating a group and heading a terrorist organization? The Saudi royal family, the Saudi, the same Saudi royal family who was in the United States, including Osama bin Laden during 9-11, who was sick to death. He had a, a kidney a disease and was said to have died by a couple of world leaders who then ended up dead the same week that they revealed it. Osama bin Laden died in 2001. None of this scene till six, none of this, none of that crap, none of that malarkey. I don't see how you fall for this stuff. I don't get it. And the mainstream media does it to you over and over and over. And then they say, uh, uh, we're, we're in Syria, support our troops. We're in Iraq, support our troops. And you fall for it. I don't get it. So anyway, the CIA formulated this group. At this point, they're not terrorists, or they're terrorists in the sense of they're fighting the Afghanistans, the true Afghanistans. And Al-Qaeda, the word, means al the qaeda list. That's what it means. But you don't speak... Uh, Arabian, so, you know, I, I don't blame you for that. Now they've changed the name Al-Qaeda, the list, the CIA list, and Al-Qaeda was formed way before Osama bin Laden came, in, came into Afghanistan. He was invited there. He was asked to donate millions to them. And at first he said no. How do you like that one? 
this boogeyman that we've been told to fear and blah, 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 came late to the party, uh, was asked to donate. He said no. He did later, uh, after talking some to some of the guys, he did donate. Not millions of billions like they, like they wanted him to. Anyway, he's off somewhere else doing some, something else. Then he gets sick. His own wife said this. His own little handler said this. There is no way. Uh, also, I think Biden even let it slip at one point. But Biden's in a position where you can't just kill him and get away with it, right? Uh, the Indian prime minister, you can kill her and get away with it. Uh, the English guy, you can, you can kill him and get away with it. Uh, there was also a French and I believe a German who also said it. You can kill all of those guys and get away with it. So Al Qaeda, Osama's, Osama bin Laden's out of the picture completely for 10, 11, 12 years, right? He's already dead. Then Obama plays this, oh, I got him. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm, I'm great. <laughs> we got Osama bin Laden. How did you get him when he died of kidney disease? How? Oh, you shot him and you got rid of the body? Really? Is that what people who are not paying attention are supposed to believe? For those of us who are paying attention, we already know. Even when the, one of the generals, the U.S. generals said he, there's no way he lived beyond 2001. No possible way. Why? Because he was not medically able to physically incapable of, of living past 2001. And Biden said the same thing. How do you like that? Go back and check it. Go back and check Biden if it's still, if they still let it on the internet. Now, so Al Qaeda is not accepted by the U.S. military. They don't want uh, the Congress donating to them. So they changed the name to ISIS. And because we can't really declare war on a faction, we have to now call it an Islamic State. We're declaring war on an Islamic State. Okay. Why are they so successful all of a sudden? Because Al-Qaeda was never that successful, right? They said they wanted to do this and the other, but they weren't that successful. In comes one of the generals uh, who spoke to Alex Jones on one of the Alex Jones show and said that we supplied them with everything. Tanks, uh, missiles, guided missiles, uh, mortars, everything. I mean, everything that you could possibly imagine of modern warfare, we supplied them with. And they were like, oh, these people are much more boogeyman than, than that old Al-Qaeda. It's the same exact people. The same exact people who were in Libya. The same exact people who were in Syria. The same exact people who went over to Palestine and then started attacking the Jews. And the Jews said, hey, wait a minute. We supplied you. We helped create you. You can't be attacking us. You know, they have to get their logistics together. And they have to pretend that this is a real enemy. And, and really, at the end of the day, if that were just the story, most Americans would say, well, I don't care. They could, they could slaughter a million Iraqis. They could slaughter a million Palestinians, Israelis, Syrians, Egyptians. We don't care. Libyans, we don't care. But now they have to put it in the news. Oh, Americans are joining ISIS. And ISIS is right here in the United States. So you have to be afraid. Tell you what, the next time somebody tells you that to your face, why don't you say, I don't care. They're not coming on my street. I don't care. They're not taking over my bank accounts. I don't care. Say that. I want you to say, I don't care. And I want you to see the reaction of the person. And I want people watching a video. If they go on the news, I want you to, I want you to say that too. I don't care. Who cares? I don't care. Then what can they report? If nobody in the United States cares, what can they report? We don't have a boogeyman then because we killed off all the boogeymen, right? They're going to have to then turn around and say, oh, there's something even more scary than ISIS. And what is that? 11 planes disappearing. 11. 
for September 11th because that is such a really great and powerful number in the Islamic world that I've never heard of. And I've lived in Islamic countries, uh, two to be exact, Morocco and Guinea. There is no Christianity there. And in fact, Morocco said you can't be converting people to Christianity. So they are definitely an Islamic state. They're, they're not uh, some open-minded people, okay? So I've lived in two separate Islamically run or tied countries. And nowhere did I hear anything about 11 being even remotely powerful or needed or necessary or praised or holy, unlike the number seven or the number three for Christian, right? So 11 planes have disappeared. I don't know if this is in the mainstream media yet or, or not, but this is, this is the big, big thing. And that they said that they're going on to red alert uh, for, for September 11th and uh, that the Secretary of, of, of State and other people are being warned away from st being in the major cities, New York, Las Vegas, LA, uh, Chicago, a couple of cities in Texas, wherever they keep the, the AWAC and that sort of thing, Florida. So they're supposedly warned to stay away from those places. You notice on 9-11, Bush didn't care. Didn't even, didn't even bat an eye. Oh, sir, we have to get you to Air Force One. I'm, I'm reading this, uh, kindergarten story. I don't have time for that. <laughs> uh, so that's the, that's the next scary thing, right? 11 planes disappearing. Now, we have it that the, both the plane that was supposedly disappeared, the first uh, Malaysian plane that disappeared, and the second one were the one in the same plane that they supposedly brought the pain plane that disappeared out of. And I know people who's, I know people who were on that flight. Really? Because now you have the experts saying that that was, it was the same exact plane and it was located in, in Germany or Belgium somewhere that they saw the actual plane. And that the wreckage from the second plane that blew up or whatever was shot down or whatever, uh, was not, was not plane wreckage, was not wreckage from a Malaysian airline, wasn't anything. Now I told you that there were, were Russian planes shot down over Ukraine. Two, two fighter planes. Now what you could be seeing is those fighter planes and those happened nearly the same day if not the same exact day, the day before. But you know, it's the news. They have to keep you afraid. They have to keep you entertained. One of the talk show, uh, talk show, uh, radio talk show hosts said that when I say good news, nobody pays attention. But if I say something to scare people, I get 10 times the audience that I normally do. How do you like that? So there you go. Be, you want to be afraid? Go ahead and be afraid. What do you think of these non-conspiracies? Thank you for watching the Shigamalai Show.